Hey, what's up my chemistry people? Who is ready for a thriller of a free response? Let's get started. Dichloroacetic acid, DCA, is an organic chemical compound with a molar mass of 128.94 grams per mole. Although preliminary studies have shown DCA can slow the growth of certain tumors in animal studies, available evidence does not support the use of DCA for cancer treatment at this time. Dichloroacetic acid consists of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and chlorine. A 0 0.10000 gram sample of the compound was burned in excess oxygen. Combustion analysis indicated 0 0.0682 grams of carbon dioxide and 0 0.0140 grams of water were produced. Part A. Answer the following questions regarding the combustion analysis of dichloroacetic acid. Subpart I. Determine the mass in grams of carbon in the 0 0.10000 gram sample of the compound. Gotta love mole conversion questions. I'm trying to determine the mass in grams of carbon. As I look at this problem, 0.0682 grams of carbon dioxide was formed. Carbon in that carbon dioxide could only have come from the dichloroacetic acid. So if I can figure out the mass in grams of carbon in the 0.0682 grams of carbon dioxide, then I also know how much carbon was originally in the DCA. Boom! Zero. 0 0.0682 grams carbon dioxide. Gonna convert to moles. Grams to moles. One mole, 44.01 grams. Again, that mass is coming from adding one carbon and two oxygen. Let's think about the relationship between carbon dioxide and carbon. For every one mole of CO2, there is one mole of carbon. So if I know how many moles of carbon dioxide were formed, I also know how many moles of carbon there are. Then we're just gonna convert back to grams to get my mass of carbon. Again, this relationship comes from the periodic table. Calculator time. We get 0 0.0186 grams of carbon. And again, keep in mind, that is the mass in grams of carbon in the carbon dioxide, but also in the DCA, because carbon in the carbon dioxide came from the DCA originally. Law of conservation of mass. Subpart II. Determine the mass in grams of hydrogen in the one in the 0 0.10000 gram sample of the compound. Just like in subpart I, we can do the same thing except using the mass of water because the hydrogen in water must have come from the DCA in the combustion. So 0 0.0140 grams of water, converting grams to moles. We're now gonna compare moles of water to moles of hydrogen. Be careful here, for every one mole of water, there are two moles of hydrogen. And then we'll just convert back using the molar mass on the periodic table. Calculator time. 0 0.0140 divided by 18, 0 0.016, enter, times two, enter, times 1.08, enter. To three sig figs, we get 0 0.00157 grams of hydrogen. Boom, subpart III. When the compound is analyzed for chlorine content only, the mass percent of chlorine is found to be 55%. Determine the mass in grams of chlorine in the original 0.10000 gram sample of the compound. Well, this is easy enough. If we have a 0.1000 gram sample and we multiply it by 55%, or 0 0.5500, our chlorine content is gonna be 0 0.05500 grams of chlorine. Boom, easy one. Give me some more. Subpart IB. Determine the mass in grams of oxygen in the original 0 0.100 gram sample of the compound. Now, for this one, we can't do it like we did part I and I, I. Because in these two parts, the carbon in carbon dioxide only could have come from the DCA, and the hydrogen in water only could have come from the DCA. But the oxygen is coming from the DCA, but it's being combusted in oxygen as well. So some of that oxygen is coming from somewhere else. But we now know the masses of three of the four elements. So if we're looking for the mass of oxygen, we're gonna take the mass of our sample, 0 0.1000 grams, 
and we're going to subtract from it the mass of carbon, which is 0 0.0186 grams. We're gonna subtract from it the mass of hydrogen, which is 0 0.00157 grams. And we're gonna subtract from it the mass of chlorine, 0 0.05500 grams. Calculator time. So the mass of oxygen is equal to 0 0.0248 grams. Oh, which brings us to subpart B or five. It says determine the empirical formula of the compound. Remember empirical formula, smallest mole ratio of the elements in the compound. We know the masses of all of the elements. We just determined that in the previous four steps. So we're just gonna convert them all to moles and compare. We've got 0 0.0186 grams of carbon. We've got 0 0.00157 grams of hydrogen. We've got 0 0.055 zero zero grams of chlorine and we've got zero point zero two four eight grams of oxygen convert them all to moles times one mole over twelve point oh one grams times one mole over one point zero zero eight grams times one mole over 35.45 grams times one mole over 16.00 grams. Calculator. 0 0.0186 0 0.00155 moles. We get again 0 0.00156 moles. For chlorine, it's 0 0.00155 moles, which gives us 0 0.00155 moles for oxygen. So a quick scan here lets me know that I have the same number of moles of each of the elements in this compound. The ratio is one to one to one to one. But let's show that. I'm going to divide each of my moles by the smallest amount. And we get exactly one, pretty darn close, exactly one, exactly one. So to come up with our empirical formula here, C-H-C-L-O. Boom. Brings us to part V-I. It says determine the molecular formula of the compound. Well, remember, the molecular formula is the true or actual ratio. We determined the simplest ratio of moles in the previous part. The ratio, the simplest ratio is one to one to one to one. I'm gonna go back to the very beginning of the problem where we're told that the molar mass of the compound, DCA, is 128.94 grams per mole. Let's come back to our empirical formula. The molar mass of one carbon, plus one hydrogen, plus one chlorine, plus one oxygen is 64.468. So that's the molar mass of my empirical formula. But we're told dichloroacetic acid has a molar mass of 128.94 grams per mole. So let's take our 128.94 and compare it to the empirical formula molar mass of 64 0.468. That'll give us our multiplier to determine what the molecular formula is. So I don't even need a calculator, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Woo! The molecular formula is twice the empirical formula. So if I know my empirical formula is CHCLO, then my molecular formula C2H2Cl2O2. Boom, I am a genius. All right, and then lastly, it says, instead of a 0 0.1000 gram sample of dichloroacetic acid, a student performs the combustion analysis with a 0 0.1000 mole sample. It says, assuming the combustion was still carried out in excess oxygen, how would this affect the empirical formula of dichloroacetic acid? 
explain. All right, law of definite proportions doesn't matter the size of your sample of dichloroacetic acid. If it's dichloroacetic acid, the ratio of the elements in that compound are always going to be the same. So empirical formula of DCA will remain unchanged. Boom. Explanation. The law of definite proportions states that a chemical compound always contains exactly the same proportion of elements by mass. Boom. And we are done.